okay so now if you see here uh, this is the google drive uh, which is visible to you i think my screen is visible so if you see that uh, there is uh, there is a google drive uh, was a link i've already shared to you right okay so i have two things into this uh, one is uh, the folder uh, where you will find an excel sheet right so what i'm doing here i'm i'm sharing this excel sheet because it is more easier for you to manage okay so let's see what is there in this excel sheet right so you see that you have session 1 session 2 session 3 session 4 i have given some session uh, mention in advance okay and uh, by uh, by one or two days i will put the detail of every session so that you are mentally prepared what this uh, training is going to uh, going to have something for me right okay so uh, for now this uh, this excel sheet uh, have the uh, accessibility to anybody okay but i will restrict to the team member right uh, those are joining this training so that is the one thing and if you open this uh, this is the video which you can easily play okay i'm also planning to put these videos on youtube but uh, the only thing is that how to restrict uh, the access actually right so i'm just thinking right so if i find a good solution i will put there also uh, a very useful thing you will find here prerequisites actually right Okay, so this is very, very interesting. Uh, what it is mentioning, Servlet, JSP, Hibernate, Spring Boot, Master Course, Prerequisites. So last time the uh, title of uh, course was Spring Boot Microserv uh, Microservice. At that time, we have not covered Docker, Kubernetes, and Cloud, right? So this time we have uh, a comprehensive course, right? So that's why this title doesn't matter, right? Even I can delete it. Let me only mention course prerequisites. So, uh, so this course prerequisites is actually my own recording, right? And uh, I mentioned here uh, introduction to servlet, MVC, JDBC, listener, servlet, JSP. Okay. And uh, last day we have understood May 1 actually, but uh, maybe you want to go more deeper so you can find it. There's an introduction of Hibernate actually, right? Okay. I'm not saying I don't cover Hibernate. Okay. Definitely servlet, JSP was never the agent of this training. But uh, in case if I get some time, I surely keep a workshop uh, for YouTube. Uh, and anybody is welcome actually, right? But in case if we are not able to do, you have this uh, refreshal material actually, okay? And believe me, many people have cracked the interviews over the year by listening to these videos, right? Like uh, this is a very important question, Hibernate, join, and plus one problem. I will cover this practically also. But in case if you're interested, you can listen to listen this recording actually, right? Okay, and then there's a third tab here, uh, which is actually book reference, okay? So I'm in progress of putting more things into this. For example, uh, this is a frequent question asked uh, by many of you. Uh, Rajiv, I'm already a senior engineer, okay? But uh, what I want actually, I, I want to be architect, right? I want to design the solution for my company. The question is that uh, you need to refer some standard books actually, right? Like there's a book called Clean Code, okay? There's a book called Effective Java. There's Design Pattern, Applying UML. Okay, thinking Java. So these are the books, basically, these are not only good Java books, but these will also help you to understand low level system design. Okay, once you understand low level system design, then only you can move to the high level system design. Okay, although this training is not for system design, but definitely because we are creating microservice, so we touch lots of things actually. Okay, so definitely after this training, you can read something extra, Okay, you can ping me separately on WhatsApp also. Okay, but I will keep you guiding time to time, right? So this is the Excel sheet uh, where you will find lots of stuff actually, right? Okay, so this is the one thing. The second thing is that if you go to this actually, uh, go back here. So I have not shared this actually, right? Uh, I will share you soon actually. That is what PDF notes cloud native application. Okay, so this is the software installation. Uh, which I give you access right to download also. It doesn't matter. But these are the uh, PDF, right? Okay. So somehow you should be agree with me that uh, it takes lots of effort to create this material, right? Okay. So that's why what I do actually, uh, I will give you uh, access right. Okay. You can read it easily. And uh, maybe I can, uh, I think I can also give you print, right? But why to waste paper? You can read online, right? Okay, so this is the PPT which uh, you believe, uh, if you remember, I was discussing yesterday, Cloud Native Application Development with Spring Boot 2024, right? Okay, so this was a little bit trainer profile and course and uh, some introduction of the course. Okay, we, we cover everything, right? And we have not understood DevOps. Don't think that this is a DevOps training. So I just told you that there are some tools which is essential for a software engineer. Like we have understood what is Maven, 
okay we have understood uh, that uh, there is a, a git actually right you should know what is pull push how to push the code to your repository okay that's it right don't uh, go too much deep initially right otherwise you divert it to that part and ultimately we have to keep keep focus on programming maven you should be very much comfortable initially right okay you should have the uh, open source community edition of intellij id okay and uh, little bit uh, little bit of uh, uh, test driven development you should know even if you want to prepare for system design interviews right people always expect that you should know something about test driven development okay so today what is the idea i will touch little bit on that also okay so you can read this i will share the uh, links with you okay yesterday we have understood maven let me do a recap of one minute on maven what is maven maven is a build tool what is the advantage of maven uh, rather than manually downloading the jar file maven goes to the central repository download the jar file and keep a copy in your computer okay so what is the advantage it act as a cache there is a hidden folder in your user account with the name called dot m2 okay you can look for that so all the jar file whatever java project you are running it is collected there so next time it don't waste the bandwidth so what is the advantage of maven it give you a standard template of the project okay the other thing is that maven also support what transitive dependency maven also support transitive dependency so you try to keep two or three line about everything okay and uh, one thing i want to tell you i will also take you take your mock interview this time right okay and uh, i will also uh, request you to uh, fill the uh, admission form actually because i may take help of some of you also okay maybe you you might be already project manager or expertise somewhere right okay so i want to you involve you also in that activity so that we can polish the people okay so my aim is that if you goes out of this training you should be polished enough and uh, you should be competent enough to face the interviews okay so by by now if you have not uh, filled your profile actually uh, perhaps initially i have given you uh, some uh, google form right okay many people have filled perhaps many people i have not shared right maybe so i will share to you those are keeping uh, uh, involved in this training uh, after today okay so uh, you you please fill it so that i can better understand you actually right okay so yes so maven is a build tool we have understood the basic life cycle this is an important diagram like clean compile package install and deploy and one thing is that let's say if you are doing install it means that package compile clean every phase is already including this is the detailed diagram of maven life cycle you don't have to mug it just basic understanding you should know what is the real use of log4j okay just a recap right log4j you, you should never write sys out right writing sys out in real production code code is uh, highly stupidity but yesterday i told you something about sl4j so you should always remember loose coupling is very very important thing okay don't forget the philosophy that uh, uh, change is the only constant in the life and of course in the programming okay today only somebody was commenting on my uh, uh, my one of the video rajiv ai tools are coming what happens to our job i say ultimately who have created this ai human being only na you, rather than thinking that ai and those tools are competitor why not you simply learn them isn't it okay and in fact uh, this is the idea suggested by uh, one of you actually uh, do we cover ai little bit so i'm planning to give a session on that right so uh, definitely some topic may not be mentioned but we try to cover okay because that could be a revision for me also right so maven is a build tool log4j is required for logging the application yesterday we have discussed in detail that you are using sl4j which is a kind of facade design pattern facade is used to hide the complexity okay in fact today i come up with a little better code right just to demonstrate you you see that uh, there is a two uh, very popular logging framework one is called log4j2 okay one is called logback right okay let's say my company uh, is not sure actually sometime ma management uh, want to go for logback sometime they want to go for log4j2 of course it should not happen but they are dicey right let's say what what i can do so in that case let's say i am a developer i am i am writing code like this okay so see that yesterday i was looking for this classes okay but uh, i have already written this code and perhaps we have not understood it what it means okay we have seen that okay private static right logger so logger this time i am importing logger from log4j2 so i'm telling you this is a bad code you know why 
because let's say my manager say rajiv you have to migrate from log4j to uh, to log back right so i need to change my code and by the way uh, logger are also using factory design uh, pattern they are also using singleton design pattern okay so design pattern is one area where many of you might be troubling i will try to help you separately okay but anyway so what is the wrong with this line number 11 that i am using the logger from log4j2 okay now what is the problem you see that my dependencies uh, my maven project have some dependencies so so far i was happy with log4j right but let's say my management have told me rajiv enough we want to use logback and logback have better performance let us assume he proved to me i have no option to change my code isn't it so now what is happening now let's say i'm trying to run this actually right so let's say if i'm trying to run this okay so you see that uh, uh, okay i think i need to do the maven update okay so as soon as i do the maven update because maybe the project was not properly updated and you said you see that my code was failing okay just because i changed the jar file and because i replace the log4j with uh, uh, logback right and my code is failing so loose coupling should be understood by you at any cost right so this is a kind of tight coupling my project is tightly coupled with a choice of logger are why we should do that why not we should go in a loosely coupled way right okay so how uh, how do you did maven update actually right okay so bhupender uh, you see that uh, on extreme right there is a mm icon right it would be always there when your project is not updated okay so uh, you see that where my uh, i'm moving my mouse at that side there is a small m also you can do one thing if you are not very sure your maven update is not there you just just click this button refresh the project okay that's it okay so now if i'm running it there is no point this code can run okay so this can uh, cannot run now that's what that's why that's why i suggested you not to use this code actually right so i think this today should be more crystal clear why i was telling you this thing so but this time we are using this code actually this time i am taking the logger from slf4j and this is the beautiful thing one thing i want to teach you that logback classic under the hood contain the dependency for slf4j the advantage of this particular dependency logback is that you don't have to put slf4j dependency separately it is bundled with that right how i click this i just uh, press the control and hover it here and press this and then i come to know oh this logback is also having slf4j internally okay i don't have to put it separately wonderful okay so now you see that what is happening i am using the logback you see that logback have a separate file but my java code never changed because of that thing okay you see that a different kind of log message is coming okay so logging is a important topic that's why i'm focusing it because whenever you want to understand the flow project logging might be very very useful not might be would be so this is the format okay but let's say you want to go back to your log4j2 so what you do you simply comment this actually changing jar file is good or changing code is good what is your common sense says guys bhupender see this time there is a button coming here right so now i reload this right so must be people saying changing jar file is but better rather than changing the code right so now if uh, i am yeah, running sorry. uh sorry to disturb you uh, if you can uh, you just showed in the output that uh, it was showing the error right in the log log for the log thing uh, can you just explain yeah. the line uh, how does that uh, that uh, log thing work in output like i am yeah, new yeah. to this okay, okay thank you no problem you see that uh, that's a good question and uh, one thing uh, don't think uh, if some uh, people may have experience and uh, you don't know the question uh, don't uh, ever hesitate to ask the question okay thank you for asking the question see see this hello world have a very simple code actually you see that i do have a try block within the try block i am writing a very silly code i am saying here string data is equal to 1 2 3 a okay do you think when i do have this particular data i am using parse string so definitely uh, definitely i should get a exception isn't it yeah yeah Yeah. and that exception i am catching and then i am putting into the loggers actually okay so that's why okay. you see that there are two logger in this line number 15 and line number 22 yes right 
and now what is happening right now which logger is active how i come to know the logger active is basically log 4j2 right you understand now yeah. if i yeah, if yeah. i Got this it. is a very very interesting question what happen if i uncomment both i will get error i will show you okay so what is happening this time log 4j2 is active okay Great. this time log 4j2 is active so this log file should work in this log file i do have some appender right okay so whenever you are using log 4j there is a notion of appender okay so appender means what is the format of logs you are looking for okay so i'm not going in deep actually okay you can see the documentation but it simply mean that okay you just see the date time format okay the name of thread okay and uh, there's some more uh, symbols and percentage n is for new line actually right okay so i'm saying that the log message should be put on console as well as log file okay is this, so basically it means that it will be uh, prevented in the console in this format right yes 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 and okay. the beauty of log4j is that you can disable it without changing the code right you were there in yesterday session uh sorry sir i was not in yesterday session right. okay no problem i will share uh, recommend you the recording right okay let me move oh, yeah, the flow. but in the short i can tell you that uh, what do you mean by this actually info means any level of logging should be traced actually right okay i think yesterday if people remember we have discussed about level of logging okay let's say yeah, i do level of yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah very good very good right so let me don't waste the time but one thing i want to tell yeah. you what happen if i enable both the things okay this is a very simple question and uh, this this problem which i'm showing you now sometime also occur in spring boot okay because uh, sometimes this is a very company requirement that okay i need to customize spring boot i don't want to use the default logger i want to use a, another logger okay so at that time this knowledge might be very handy now i'm doing very silly i have done uh, uh, mentioned the dependency of logback i have also mentioned the dependency of log4j2 now what i am doing here i am not using the classes from a specific vendor i am using the classes from sl4j now sl4j might be get confused hey hey programmer you want to use log4j or you want to use uh, logback isn't it it should give me an error okay ideally let's see if it give me error uh, i have not checked it but to be frank but you see that it is giving you some error okay all the log messages are printed but still it is an error message saying class path contain multiple slf4j binding okay so i hope you get a basic idea some good programming practice about the logging isn't it okay so good programming practice about logging i will also cover good programming practice on every topic whatever i teach okay so good first good programming practice is that uh don't do extensive logging in production system in production system we disable the logging most of the time while developing we can give the info or even uh debug also right so that depend on you the second thing is that uh you should also customize the logging as per your company requirement okay what do you mean by root logger right root logger means what what is the application level logging actually every everything right framework as well as your code that logging level is info rajiv can we customize the logging for a specific package answer is yes for that you can simply uncomment this line logger name form dot demo level is equal to info okay for example if i am saying here error i can say it here info and uncomment this guy so what it means if any error message coming in the com dot demo package and if it is under the info it is going to be traced right i i hope everybody understand this is for whole project and this is for specific package okay so that is the whole idea you can explore a little bit more uh, your own right so this is what our basic understanding on this wonderful framework log for you then we have a, another very important concept changing configuration rather than code right yes okay so ch code you should not touch actually right try to uh not change the code right if you are changing the code each and every day uh, that means we are not a good uh, good engineer okay so another uh, wonderful framework which is expected uh, to be known well in a product based company or any good company is jnit and mockito so i don't uh, cover mockito because many people may not be comfortable with the dependency injection because mockito also use dependency injection okay so my plan is i will introduce just basic idea about jnit today okay because many beginner people may be there in this batch okay once we become comfortable with dependency injection and when we come to spring boot actually okay we create a bank application at that time will i will demonstrate 
uh, JUnit Mokito in detail. Is that okay? Right? So, let me see only a brief idea. Okay? So, anybody know about test-driven development? Okay? You can chat or you can say yes, no. What is test-driven development? Guys, anybody? Anybody can help me? Okay, so uh, somebody have a uh, problem in joining the meeting, right? Uh, are you able to join uh, without any problem? Somebody is pinging me again and again. Right, test cases before API service. Yes, 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 right? Okay, so uh, so that's correct actually, right? So test-driven development means what? Uh, let me show you a wonderful and easiest diagram, right? This is what iterative software development. See, there was a time people used to use waterfall lifecycle, not anymore. Okay, so what is iterative software development? This is as per agile philosophy. Okay, so as per agile philosophy, what you do actually, you write the use cases. You have to uh, separate your project in use cases, whether it's a monolith or microservice. And then you prioritize, prioritize them, right? Sorry. For example, maybe you want to uh, write the code for logging module first, right? And then you want to write the code for, let's say, shipping, right? Something like this. So whatever you do, you prioritize with your team. And then you do, no, you know what? You don't write the code. You first run the test cases. You say, what's the silly idea? Are, we have no code, so test case will fail. Isn't it? Test case will fail, right? So let the test case fail. Let the test case fail. And then what you do actually, then you write the enough code so that your test case pass. Okay, so, and then you keep refactoring. Refactoring means improving the code without breaking the code. And ultimately, when your test case passed with the flying feller, you add that particular software in a working system. Okay, so client don't have to wait for one year, two year. This is not waterfall life cycle. This is how iterative software development works. So TDD is industry practice. Okay, so let let code, let code test case fail, right? Write the enough code so that it passed and then refactor to improve the code. Okay. So a few days back, I have put one snapshot in my LinkedIn profile about very important annotation which can be used with the Spring Boot, right? Let me zoom the uh, size, actually, right? Okay, I don't know, I'm not able to zoom it. But you see that we have some annotation like test, before each, after each, right? And don't worry, I do have a cheat sheet and uh, let me show you. So what I'm doing actually, whatever topic I will teach you, I will create a small cheat sheet so that you don't have to make your own notes, right? So what is JUnit? JUnit 5 is the latest framework for, for doing what? For doing TDD. TDD means what? Test driven development. Okay, so before, before writing, writing the test case, before writing the test case, okay, do, oh, sorry, before writing the code, I'm sorry, before writing the code, write the test case, write, the test case, right? So enough theory, right? But one thing is that there's some some common sense about testing. You cannot test all the methods, right? Okay. But uh, there are some quality control. Even if uh, if we do some demo of basic uh, uh, CI/CD pipeline, we have to ensure that those quality control should be passed, right? Okay. So at that time, this JUnit knowledge would be very useful. Okay. So let me directly go to the code, and I want to show you how to do this basic thing. So first of all, uh, let me not do that stupidity. I should use it only one logger, either logback or either SLF4J. Don't use both actually. So what I want to do, actually, I want to do testing. So you don't have to remember all those dependency, guys, what I'm doing, I'm sharing you these cheat sheet actually. Okay, what we can do, we can go to Google and search one by one, but who have this much time, right? So what I'm doing, I'm simply pasting it here, right? So one thing is that Jupiter is the fifth planet of solar system, isn't it? Jupiter is the fifth planet, right? And what is the version of JUnit I'm using here? JUnit 5, okay? So JUnit 5 is also called JUnit Jupiter, right? And there's another component of JUnit that is called Jupiter engine, okay? So these two dependency guys, you have to put. Just copy paste from my cheat sheet or you run this code as it is, no rocket science. Then what you do? You can simply reload this project actually, may one update kind of. Okay, now I believe this project has Maven dependency for JUnit. So what I want to do, guys, I want to write a very simple thing, right? I think this I've already uh, tried. Okay, let me delete this. Even let me delete this. 
So what I do have, I do have very simple class that is called calculator. Now this ID is very handy. What you need to do, you need to right click here and then say generate. Okay. So we are not doing uh, a real life pro uh, project right now. Just giving a basic warm up kind of things in JNet. And when we start uh, Spring Boot testing, at that time you have next uh, next uh, detail into this. I just want to introduce the software tool. That's it. Okay. This is not extensive training on the tools. The extensive training would be on Spring, Spring Boot, microservice, and other components. Hope you are understanding. So just right click here, and there's a uh, option coming here. If you right click here, and then you say generate, and somewhere you will find the test. Click this guy. ID is intelligent enough. It recognizes that a programmer is using JUnit 5 because it's it sends from uh, class path. So what do you need to do? You have some options actually. Okay, what is the use of this method? I will show you. And I can click this method also. So now what is the advantage? This tool is very intelligent. Whenever I'm using Maven, Maven know that there should be two branches. One is main branch and one is what? Test branch. Isn't it, guys? Right? So that's what you have this template of project. So you might be wondering, what is the use of this actually, right? You want to uh, test the calculator, that's it actually. So one of, uh, I, I personally, uh, uh, I'm telling one experience. Today only I get a call from one person and uh, he says that I used to work in Java long back actually. And then I moved to some management role and something and I don't have done the coding from so many years. Okay, and he says Java used to be difficult, okay? Because there was a time Java have lots of XML, okay? And that was XML mess. But nowadays, life is so cool. Learning any framework is very easy. Nowadays, framework equal to, framework is equal to concept, right? You just need to learn concept. Just you need to understand the annotation of that framework. That's it, okay? So that means framework equal to concept plus annotation, right? Okay, so you should know both actually, right? But that come with the practice. So now, what I want to do, I want to test my, I don't, uh, I want to test my calculator actually, right? So let me write here calculator, calculator is equal to new calculator, okay? So I can do one thing, let me do one thing like this. So this is the add method, so I can write the name as add test. So I will do calculator is equal to new calculator, and then what I do here, guys, okay, so... My keyboard is troubling, yes. So what I can do here, there's something called assert actually. Okay, so you see that there's something called assertion. Assertion, right? I think many of you may have used and there is something called assert methods. So what is assertion? Assertion means strong belief. Hey, what is my strong belief? Either this test case should pass or the code should fail. Okay, so whenever test case is failing, it don't throw exception, it throw error. Now, what is the difference between exception and error? It's a very famous interview question in Core Java. Okay, so uh, personally speaking, if you want to master uh, the whole thing in Java ecosystem, right? Okay, you should also learn Core Java from depth. Okay, so what I'm trying to say that it is asking you two things. What is expected and what is actual actually? Are, what is expected? Are, if I'm adding two plus two, it should be four, right? So then what I can do here? I can say what I have actually. Okay, so I do have calculator and then I can say here calculator dot add actually, right? Okay, so I can say here, let's say two comma two, right? So this is so simple. Now, after I did my test case, I want to clean that calculator object. One thing is very, very important. Whenever you are writing test case, one test case should be 100% isolated, isolated from the another test case. Okay, Raji, what it means? Let's say you want to write the test case for MUL, multiplication. Okay, I'm a lazy guy, let me write MUL. And this is what, multiplication symbol. Now my manager is saying, Raji, you need to uh, test it also, right? So I say here, MUL test. So what I should do, I should say here, MUL. Let's say I'm saying here, 20 into two. It should be 40, right? So this is what I want to do. So what is good programming while doing testing? One test case should be 100% isolated from the another test case. So that means you should not use same calculator object for the both test cases. This is the industry standard. Okay, guys, uh, is, is I'm making some sense or is I'm just going on, going on? Yes, tell me, guys. Yeah, it's clear, clear, sir. 
Yes, right. Prajeev, it's right. clear. Ah, very good, right? So please uh, ping me here. I feel that I'm alone, right? Okay. So that's that's what, right? So whenever I say yes, no, you can ping in the chat also, right? If you don't want to, because speaking sometimes uh, disturb the flow. I understand. I'm thank you and thanks for for understanding this thing. So you see that what is happening? I'm unnecessarily creating the calculator object twice. Okay. And this is uh, wrong actually. Okay. It's a violation of dry principle. Don't repeat your code, na? So what I should do? Rather than doing it, and that's why Java, uh, that's why uh, JUnit have given few wonderful methods before each and after each. So before each and after each will run before every test case. Okay, so let me write some sys out so that you understand. Okay, it run before each test case, right? So this is what I'm saying here, right? So let me paste it here. And what is going to happen? It run after after each test case. So I told you what is framework nowadays. Mockito also comes under TDD. Yes. Okay. Mockito is used for actually unit testing uh, because there is a concept called unit testing and integration testing. Okay. I must have clarified that. Okay. Uh, thank you for reminding me. Just me run this code. I will clear your doubt. Okay. So what is happening? Let me write some sys out. Okay. Let me write some sys out. And what is going to happen? I can say here. This is what add test method, add test method, right? So testing is very important, okay? Many companies uh, are very strict about this. If you are not doing testing, bye-bye, right? That is what many companies say. So what is going to happen? Let me run this, okay? So how to run this? Run something like this, run test case. So what is JUnit? You learn some concept and then you learn some annotation, that's it. So see that it run before each test case, then add method is running. It run after each test. So you see that before each and after each, sandwich your test case. Okay, I'm repeating. Before each and after each, sandwich your test case. Okay, agree? Right? Do we write sys out? This is really bad actually. I was just writing sys out to show you, isn't it? Let me quickly remove this sys out. This is really silly. Okay, right. So I was just showing you, right? So I will come to the use case of Mockito, don't worry. But what I want to do, as soon as test case is ready to run, a new calculator object should be gonna to be created. Okay, and I should nullify the calculator object. So in real life, if we are creating the data source connection, so I can create the data source connection in this method and clean up the data source connection here. Okay, and you know, now I don't need this line, right? I can reduce the number of line of code. A good developer always think about how to reduce number of line of code. Now, assertion is a class, okay? It has so many static methods. So why hell I should repeat assertion, assertion each time, right? So can cannot I say something like this, static import, okay? Now don't say you don't know static import. Anyway, this is a very simple core Java concept, okay? So I will also start core Java batches next week, uh, not next week, by the way, sorry, next month actually, okay? Dates are not discussed, but uh, that course, if you want to join, you can uh, crack uh, many interviews, okay? And why we are doing calculator input uh, to null? Does GC handle? Yes. So GC can handle. Uh, GC, yeah. Sir, can I, uh, like, okay. Uh, you said like uh, we, we are using the static one, right? So in static, like uh, we don't have to use, create the object and use uh, through the object, right? We have to use uh, through the class directly. Is yes, that yes. What you mean here? Your, your, your understanding is 100% correct, right? So static method, what's okay. the beauty of static uh, static method? This is the static method within this class, okay? So rather than saying class name dot something, you can save number of typing, you can do this. So there's a question, Raji, why you are saying calculator equal to null? A garbage collector will automatically clean it, okay? I'm just doing a kind of simulation, okay? It's In real life, we will never write calculator, right? We may be writing data source. Data source, right? Data source used for JDBC and all those things. And then we can have a method close. Will close method automatically call or you have to do some trick for that? You have to, right? Okay, that's why those cleanup code, I'm, I'm saying cleanup code, right? Cleanup code should come under this method. You got the idea, everybody? And sometime, sometime I also need a special method. Okay, let me do that also. Okay, I can say that before, before all, before all, let me write something I write. And then I want to write a method that is called after all. So what do you mean by before all and after all? Let me try to understand this also. Okay, so let me write after all. 
Okay. So actually, sometime what happened? Let's say you want to create a connection factory. Okay. You want to do a job which should be done only once in for the all the test cases. Okay. I mean to say what I want to do. Let me write this out. It will, it will run only once. Run only once for all the test cases. Okay. Now annotation name is wrong. This should be uh, before all. I think before all right so before all and what's the name and please remember before all method should be static okay otherwise it will give you compilation error okay this is the syntactical requirement and then here i want to say after each right so now what is going to happen after uh after uh, what is that before all and after, after all. all okay after all we are all programmers <laughs> yes or no guys Right. So let me uh, let me say at end. Right. So uh, normally after all, before all is not so much required, but I'm just teaching you a little bit. So please remember when we start uh, unit testing Spring Boot, I will not teach this fundamental again. Right. Please keep revising. Okay. So these test cases are running. Okay. Very easy. Okay. One thing I want to keep your attention on one topic. Okay. And today also I have uh, uploaded uh, some projects actually. Okay, so if you have already done Spring Boot little bit, so what you can do, you can also follow this playlist actually. Okay, I am planning to put uh, lots of things into this. Okay, so for example, today I put uh, employee management application, simple JDBC with the Spring Boot, then JDBC template, then entity manager. And this question is frequently asked by the people, Rajiv, I want to configure two data source in the Spring Boot project. I want to use Jersey framework. I want to use MongoDB. I want to use blah, blah, blah. So my plan is to add more and more stuff into this, right? Okay. So it doesn't mean that I'm giving you a paid training. So I don't put the things into uh, this YouTube. The only intention is that if you, uh, and sometimes I notice if you pay a few money, so you are more serious, right? While learning, I don't know. At least me, I have noticed that. Okay. And I've also put this video on YouTube, but not all the uh, video would be there. Only first two or three video will be there, right? Okay. So that would be there. So I was coming to one thing. And that's why I opened this channel. So you will find something called module two spring boot testing. So already I have uh, put two videos, which is covering in detail. What is JUnit and Mokito? Okay. So I'm not planning to cover Mokito uh, because there's no point. We'll do that with the spring boot. That would be more easier. Okay. So, and more useful actually. Okay. But uh, if I think there was a question, Raji, what is Mokito? So please listen to that video. It will help you. Okay, but I can help you a little bit for understanding a uh, little bit, little bit for now. Okay, so just 10 minutes, right? So now what is happening? Let me add a page and explain you why, why someone, someone need what? Mokito, right? So Mokito is a framework. The name sorry, is... Sorry, uh, before going yeah. there, I have a question. Yeah, so yeah. I think we... For this J unit, right? We did it for a class which has like a business logic. Do mm -hmm. we need to do in a real project scenario J unit for every class, like a controller or basic classes? Like that, because I saw some terms like code coverage and all, right? Yeah. So true, true. does it get calculated based on this where all we have created a test case for each class? True, so maybe true. like two questions. How is that? Uh, do we need to create it for every class? And how is this value calculated? See, actually, that's a wonderful question. There is something called Jaka Co uh, and there are some code coverage tools, right? Okay, so what is happening? Uh, let's say you have some simple CRUD operation. You have five methods, right? Let's say add, uh, add account, delete account, update account, transfer fund, and let's say. So what happens whenever you write the test cases, those uh, test coverage code also check the branching. Is your test case covering all the negative and positive cases? And that's how it calculates number of percentage actually. And your company may have a criteria that number of test case which cover the branch should be 80%, right? I hope you, I answer your question. So basically, it depends on the developer based on the business uh, cases, right? For example, if yeah. you have five, so just put those five and no, it, will, it, it, it will actually uh, check if it is covering all. Yeah. For example, let's say you have written if else uh, in your code. For example, you are doing fund transfer, right? But in the fund transfer, the account don't have sufficient fund, right? Let's say uh, from account don't have sufficient fund. So you throw the exception from that. So there, there's one branch of it. Yes or no? And then there's another branch, right? Let's say 
there is an account in which you want to transfer the money. It have uh, uh, it it is having money more than what government suggests actually, right? So that means a code have four or five branches, right? So all those branches should be covered in the test cases when you write the test case for a specific method. Don't only cover for positive test case, right? Let me show you the scenario. For example, let's say you have this calculator. Okay, so right now life is very very simple. Okay, uh, these methods don't throw the exception, and I forget to tell you TDD actually. Okay, before that I was answering a question, right? Uh, let me answer that question. Uh, why we need Mokito actually, right? So uh, one thing uh, many beginner might not be aware that whenever we create the application in real life, we follow MVC design pattern. Okay, so this is called MVC three tier architect. Okay, so we have something called web layer, service layer. Okay, and we have persistence layer. Persistence layer is also called DAO layer. Okay, even if you are using microservice, this model will remain same actually. Okay, so what is happening? I am trying to answer why we need Mockito actually, right? So let's say there is a uh, there is a user request. It goes to the web layer. Web layer should talk to the service layer. Service layer should talk to the persistence layer, and then it should talk to the database. So if I am testing my whole application, right? My web layer actually talking to service layer. Service layer talking to persistence layer and then for the database. Then it is called integration testing. <laughs> Sorry. So integration testing have use case of Mokito, but not that much. Basically, Mokito is a tool which is required when you want to do truly unit testing. Listen, this is a very important interview question. What is what do you mean by true unit testing? True unit testing means what? This module should be tested in isolation. Are you understanding? Rajneesh is saying, come again. I am saying that, what is integration testing? If a web layer actually calling service layer, service layer actually calling persistence layer, this become integration testing. What is unit testing? Unit in isolation. So that means if you are testing web layer, it should not actually talk to service layer. It should talk to the fake service layer. And that fake layer is created using Mokito. Have I given the basic idea about what is Mokito? Yes. Okay. Very good. Right. So Mokito is a wonderful uh, uh, framework, but it is not the right time. Okay. Uh, she's saying a little bit confused. So I request you to listen this uh, video. Right. Let me share the link. Actually. Right. Today. Today only you listen it. We cover this in detail when we do Spring Boot testing. But then, Raji, why you are covering the basic idea about uh, JUnit so that you understand these tools are important. Okay. So this is what. So, so there are so, so many interesting things, right? Let me go a little bit more into this. Uh, what do you mean by TDD? TDD means what? First write the test cases and then write the code, okay? Does my ID support these things? Yes. So let's say I want to write something like this. Uh, let's say division test, okay? Div test, right? Okay, I'm calling the method div actually, right? Let's say I do have uh, 20 and I'm testing with the two. So answer should be 10. Now ID says, hey Rajiv, this method is not there. So what is going to happen? It will show me a bulb actually. Okay, so now I can use this and I can use this bulb and let me write the spelling A here and B here. Okay, so this is TDD. Okay, let me by mistake return this code because I was in sleep, right? Let us see. So this is a very silly code. So garbage in, garbage out. So your test case must fail actually. Test case will fail definitely, right? Okay, so then you see, oh, what is happening? It is actual zero. Oh, I have written the wrong code. Let me correct it, right? So I'm just doing dramatization, but this is uh, on real life. You never write calculator. We'll write better code uh, as the time progress. Okay, so now what is happening? It is also showing you that test case failed last time. Okay, so this time it should pass. But sometimes, sometimes failure of a code is a success. Okay, what it means? For example, Let's say we are taking another scenario, right? So I'm saying here, t uh, div test with exception, with exception, okay? So let's say if I'm doing divide by zero, then it should not give you answer at any cost, isn't it? Okay, so you want to ensure that, that it should fail actually. Are you able to understand? So there's a wonderful method here, hazard throw, hazard throw, right? So what you are saying that if something goes wrong, Okay, if I'm doing divide by zero, I'm expecting arithmetic exception to be arise. And dear friend, it used lambdas. And don't say I don't know lambda because I cannot teach you code Java. But 
recently i have taken a workshop on java 8 okay i will show you that video and please do that okay so i will show you right so what i what i am trying to say i am passing this lambda right so this is the lambda i am saying here if this piece of code run if you simply pass it it will not work this is how it is designed it simply means that if you run this you are expecting that arithmetic exception should occur that means that means occurring of exception is success of this test case you you people are getting something out of this say yes or no uh, yes, sir. yes sir. right okay and can you see that these method looks very bad actually right okay can i have some descriptive method and i could have a requirement rajiv i want to run the test cases in a particular order right okay in crud application uh, sometime it may matter right okay so all those things can be done actually okay so yes very good right so see that what is happening you have tons of annotation and you please refer my cheat sheet these are the most frequently used annotation right so let me use display <clears throat> so what i can do here i can come here and mention it here okay so i want a descriptive name actually so i can use display name and then i can give the name actually at test right something like this okay so give the descriptive name right this is again a good programming practice this is M M mul this is actually what div test okay and even be more specific in spellings actually right i am horrible div test what okay fail fail with what fail with exception right exception and complete spelling right don't be lazy like me okay so then there is a very interesting thing disable so i'm saving the time otherwise i can simply write it let's say you don't want to run this test case so you can simply say disable okay so this test case would be grayed off there is another annotation which is very very handy actually that is called enable on os enable enable on os right okay so let's say i'm saying that if i'm running on window laptop then only run if i'm running on linux then only run so this code will not run because i'm not using linux this time okay there's another annotation that is called enable on jre enable on jre this topic in detail is discussed on my youtube <coughs> sorry so uh, what i'm saying here let's say uh, it should be java right okay so i'm saying that right now actually i think i've taken the older jar file they don't support java 21 right or java 21 is not supported maybe i've taken older jar file so it means that run this only if i'm using java 15 will this test case run or not run apply your common sense i'm using java 21 guys no it will not uh, it will be ignored actually right dev test method is ignored because i am using java 21 isn't it let me it show will you. Fail. It will fail, right? It will not fail. It will simply ignore, right? Okay. Enable on JRE means if Java is 15, then only run this test case. Okay, let me show you the output. You see that this is grayed off. Yes or yeah, no? Disable. Disable, kind of. And even uh, by using uh, uh, JUnit, you can also uh, ensure the performance of your code. Okay, all the performance metrics and all those topics are totally different. But let me write a very simple code actually, right? Let's say we have, we have let's say a uh, product API or let's say city API. Okay, same example I've given into that uh, uh, YouTube video, right? So I will not waste too much time. Uh, we directly go to Spring Boot, actually, uh, Spring Framework, okay? Spring Boot not, first we learn Spring, okay? Many, uh, many uh, instructor, what they are doing, they are just teaching directly Spring Boot. I think this is not the right approach. So anyway, so what I want to do, what I have, let's say I do have some parameters. Okay, let's say longitude, attitude, altitude, you know, these are geographical parameters. Okay, so let's say what I need to do, I need to return the city depending on some parameter. And let's say this is a slow API. To simulate the slow API, I'm saying here thread dot sleep. Thread dot sleep. Okay, I'm doing deliberately. Let's say I'm saying here three thousand milliseconds okay so catch interrupted exception right something like this okay and finally what is going to happen let me return something called daily right so now problem is that uh, my manager is saying hey if this test case is taking more than two seconds it should be considered failure okay you got the idea 
Yes. So how to do such kind of things actually, right? So now what I can do, this testing is a wonderful topic actually, okay? I love this, but uh, we are not going too much deep dive into this, okay? But you understand that uh, we have covered some basic tools actually, right? We have, uh, can you uh, share link for multi-threading to study? Uh, Bhupinder, I will share, right? Okay, I will share. Okay. Uh, Raju, I have one question. Yeah, yeah. How the code coverage will be calculated means uh, it's based on the lines we are covering or it's based on the methods we are covering, how it is work? Based on the branching, actually. That is, again, I think we have not understood what it means, right? For example, here you're writing some piece of code. If, okay, th this you will not write in the test case. You write something here, okay? You're saying something like this. If, if let's say, L equal to this, then it should happen. Else, if this is that, it should happen. Are you covering all the branches? That is what test code coverage check. It will check how many method you have tested actually. Okay, how you met, uh, how you how many method you tested. This is the first parameter. Second parameter is that how much branch you have covered of that method. I hope uh, I'm uh, able to convey to you. Yeah, yes, yeah, no? yeah, yeah. That's what I'm getting. Both, uh, branch, both are required. Yeah. Branches means uh, if else for while these only right. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. All okay, all the it. possible uh, outcome of that actually. Right. Okay. okay. Now I think it should be crystal clear. Yeah. We'll cover that thing actually, right? With Spring Boot. Yeah, right. So what I'm trying to say, uh, this is what I'm saying here, city API equal to null actually, right? So what I want to do, this is after each actually, and then what what, what I want to do, I want to say uh, assert, assertion, and then what? What I want to do, I want to say assert timeout, assert timeout, timeout, right? This is very, very useful, right? So now you can say actually, what you are looking for okay so java 8 is wonderful thing i will share my video okay please uh, have a look on that and i'm regularly organizing workshops right so even if uh, you're not my student i think most of you are my student but at least you can listen to those workshops right you should learn right by me or anybody else it doesn't matter okay now what i want to do i want to say duration in millis actually Okay, so what it means as a timeout duration in millis and then you write lambda actually, right? So you can say something called city API, city API dot what? Get city, right? Let's say I'm passing uh, latitude 45, something like this. Okay, so what it means actually? It means that your method should not take more than 2000 millisecond to execute. If it is taken more than this method. Isn't, yeah. isn't this city API null should be in teardown and that testing yeah, 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 should. Yeah, actually, this is what I did actually. And that's why I normally keep this method below actually, right? So that I should not get confused. Okay, now I was just testing you whether you people are sleeping or not. <laughs> anyway, so you got the idea. Now if I run it, uh, it should work actually, right? It should fail because the API was taking 3000 millisecond. And you see it's waiting, waiting, waiting. Ultimately, it should give me some error, okay? Execution exceed timeout. Then my manager say, hey, please improve the performance. I will improve the performance. Uh, improving performance should be like this, <laughs> changing the number, okay? In real life, it is more complicated, but somehow we improve and now manager is happy. My test case is also passing. There's a concept called test suite. Okay, that is beautifully explained in my video. That is around one hour, 30 minutes videos. Have a look on that. Yes, if you understand Hindi, if you are a, a Hindi speaking person, I'm too, right? You will find lots of videos on my channel actually. Okay, so maybe I keep a separate channel for Hindi and English so that uh, people can understand maybe later on. So this is what we understand the essential tool actually. Okay, one tool uh, is also there uh, that is called... Uh, uh, what is called, right, Git, right? So what is the difference between Git and GitHub? GitHub is a cloud, right, we, uh, uh, cloud solution where we put the code, where we collaborate the code. And Git is a tool which is basically version management system. So just need to learn about working directory, staging area, and local repository, right? Just read a little bit about it. You should know how to pull the code, how to push the code, that's it. Okay, we are not doing a full-fledged DevOps right now, right? Okay. So you so, have any videos? Uh, we have any videos regarding this kit and GitHub, uh, Raju? Yeah. Uh, till now, not. I think uh, I will record and put into the YouTube. Yes or no? Right. Okay. I will. Okay. I will. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, uh, so last day I told you, you just need to know a little bit. For example, let's say uh, this is. Uh, let me show you one thing. Right. So uh, this is your 
cloud native application. You see that this is the Git repository. If I say here, if I show the hidden item, you notice that there's a dot Git folder. So this means this is a Git repository. So let me tell you what we need to do, right? Let me simply copy this. Let me let me uh, uh, let me go to desktop for a while. And let me show you a little demo, right? What you should know a little bit. That's it. Okay, demo bit. Okay, right. So let's say we have developed some software, right? And what I want to do, I want to, <clears throat> I want to uh, manage the lifecycle of this project, right? I want to share with the project, right? Collaborative tool, to GitHub, uh, <clears throat> you know. So what I will do, first of all, I say here, Git status, right? So it say that, okay, hey, this is not a Git repository. So please observe this cycle. Okay, you have working directory. Okay, what is working directory? You you compare this with a shopping cart, right? You go physically to a, a mall. You have shopping cart. You can put anything into that cart, but only thing you can purchase. How much money pocket? Uh, how much uh, money is there in our pocket? Isn't it? So there's a notion of working directory, staging uh, staging area and local repository. So what is happening right now? This is a a folder, right? It is not considered as a Git repository. So you run some command actually, git init. When you say git init, it is initialized as a Git repository. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is initialized as a Git repository. If I say here now git status, it tell me that no commit yet. Okay, you are saying that you are on a master branch and untrack file. It is saying that there is a folder, okay, which is untracked. Okay, in the terms of Linux, folder and everything is called file conceptually, right? So it's saying that there's a file which is not tracked. So right now, I'm in which state, actually? I'm in staging area or I'm in working directory? Okay. Staging area, right? Working directory. Working directory. Are you need to reach to staging area. How to reach to staging area? You need to say get add dot. Dot, dot means all. If you want to add one by one, you can also do that. So once I do it, if I ask him, hey, what is Git status? Then it tell me, Raji, what is happening? These files are basically in staging area, right? Okay, so now I do have one option. I can go back to working directory. I can move some file up to the work. I will share my notes actually, right? Okay, so what is happening? Then what I can do, git commit actually, right? So git commit. So git, uh, sorry, git commit hyphen m right this is what commit message so i can say here demo on git actually right so if i do that if i say enter what is happening actually now these are committed but this is called local commit this is called local commit so uh, if i say here git status it will tell me everything is neat and clean okay so now what i need to do this is i want to share with my friend actually right so uh, let's see Right. Okay. Uh, sorry, I have muted myself by mistake. Right. So see that what I was saying. Uh, now I think it's okay. So this is the local Git repository. Then what you need to do? You need to go to your account, not to my account. Okay. So let me open this somewhere here. Right. So what I will do? I will click this plus sign and I say here new repository. Okay. I can give the name. Let's say demo Git. Any name. If you have already this, it will not suggest you. Normally, you are creating public repository with GitHub. Okay, GitLab allow you as many private repository you want. You can add Git ignore. Okay, so I don't want to start this topic. Otherwise, you know, four and five session uh, goes into this and I lose the interest in cloud native application and you too, right? Are you agree somewhere, guys? Yes or no? Yeah, I but right? this yes. Is I mean, we are not, not here for Git, actually. <laughs> but uh, I am trying to satisfy the people. Maybe, uh, again, I am saying, repeating the same thing yesterday, which I did here. Not knowing something is not a problem, right? Okay, and I uh, I think we have uh, many people in this team, actually, right? Okay, so what is happening? This is how you can do this, actually. So this is the 
git repository created actually okay so so now what you can do you can uh, you can connect it to the repository right so let me show you again so new repository you can give something here right description now if i'm giving this name it will say it is already taken so you can say one okay something like this okay you can give public repository and then what you can do <clears throat> you can say create repository okay so now what is happening you have these two things actually so saying that you create a new repository from scratch i say i already run this command actually i just need to use this git remote add horizon so horizon is the alias of the spelling you can write ravi also here okay but next time you forget there are lots of video on youtube on git we can get the basics yes or no yes uh, that's correct and even uh, i i feel that there are uh, lots of <clears throat> people in this training they are senior folks and uh, you people can also help out the juniors actually right okay and uh, chat is enabled in our uh, whatsapp group right i believe in uh, what it called democracy right so you are also unmuted actually right okay you are not muted oh, right? sir we can use uh, we can use directly the git push and uh, put it into the git right uh, yeah there are multiple also... ways multiple way but i i prefer in this way it means it's up to you right okay so now so it's up to us like whether we use a remote or uh, we directly use the git push right no 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 you should use the remote different. otherwise where it will push actually yes or no so now what you need to do you need to say git push horizon master what is horizon who tell me okay. what is horizon horizon is a alias of this url yes or no okay, now it will push to that uh, that git that right? repository okay yeah that's not right. asking me yeah. username password because this windows system have cache my password yes or no right okay. and by the way nowadays don't use password if you use some token right so uh, now i will not teach more than this okay i will try to suggest some videos in case if you are looking for right okay so this was the introduction of the tools for software engineering right okay so i will share this pdf if you want you can view this you can uh, you can understand and one humble advice whenever you are in this training right uh, it is possible take a copy pen okay and note down the important point okay so it will help you to focus a little bit more so now this is the another pdf okay title of this pdf is what can we read it title of this pdf is spring boot master course so these are around 250 pages notes actually okay again this is for viewing purpose only okay but if you refer these notes carefully you don't need to refer books actually definitely we can refer documentation okay so again there is some trainer profile and blah blah things okay so there are some modules like introduction spring core spring aop spring jdbc spring mvc spring rest and right so there are so many topics actually there are uh, small projects also and many of the project now i'm putting on youtube also right okay so and we'll do a bank application which uh, may not be there on the youtube right okay so introduction to spring framework okay so believe me uh, what is people are asking me uh, there are so many legacy frameworks right okay so there used to have something called uh, j2e right i am doing this java uh, from early 2000 right long back right at that time if somebody know ejb he was considered god actually okay ejb used to be enterprise java being so why i am telling ejb in the lecture of spring okay because ejb was older ecosystem and ejb was used to do distributed computing in java but what was the problem with ejb that's a wonderful solution but it was very complicated it was very complicated then a guy come whose name is rod johnson right let me show you his photo somewhere so there was a guy called rod johnson right where he is that yeah this is the gentleman right so his name is rod johnson so in early 2003 long back you see this is 2024 30 year old framework nahi 30 or 20 yeah 20 and still it is so hot right so this guy say that j2e is a complicated way to create distributed application in java let me give you a easy way and he given a framework to world and that was called spring framework okay if you understand hindi because i am a native hindi speaker in 
Hindi, spring is called Basant. Okay, if you are Punjabi, you know how how big festival it is in Punjab, right? Okay, Basant. I think it is all over India, right? Okay, so what I'm trying to say, why he have given this name spring to a framework? He say, if you spring, you would have spring in your life. Your life become beautiful. Okay, right. Uh, for example, uh, the people those are in US can second my thought process. In winters, it was extremely cold, right? And when, when spring come, everybody is so happy. Yes or no? So that's why he given the name to this framework, Spring Framework, because Spring Framework really have changed the ecosystem of Java. So if somebody asking you in an interview, what is Spring Framework? This is simply asked, right? This is the first ice-breaking question. Okay, so you need to just tell him that, hey guys, Spring is a framework which is there since 2003 for simplification of Java EE software development. Okay, right. It was there to simplify J2E, right? But after a time, what happened? It have replaced J2E because it becomes so popular. Everybody was looking for uh, for understanding how it can take advantage of uh, Spring to improve his software. So Spring is a framework which is there from 2003. Okay. So I want to draw one rough diagram for you. Right. Okay. Just give me one minute. So this is very important knowledge, which may be the, not there in uh, any books or uh, really maybe on YouTube, right? So you should understand the older system. Older system means what? Long back, right? So long back in early 2002 or three, at that time, we have something called J2E. So what is J2E? J2E is a group of specifications, okay? There are many specifications, right? So that specification is called JSR. What they are called? JSR. So your assignment is you need to look for JSR and JCP. Okay. You can put into WhatsApp also. Okay. Please use that group to share the knowledge with each other. Anyway, JSR stands for Java Specification Request and JCP stands for Java Community Process. So in lo long back 2003, we have a J2E ecosystem. J2E stands for Java to Enterprise Edition. And there was many software actually, right? Okay, you know servlet, servlet, right? JSP, okay? There's something called EJB, there's something called JMS, okay? There are hundreds of things, not 100, more than 30 specifications, right? And these are not product actually, these are specifications, right? You cannot directly use them. You need a vendor project, vendor product. And at that time, many product was very popular. You may have heard about Glassfish. Some of you might have heard about WebLogic. Yes or no? Say yes or no, yes. 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 Some some of you know WebLogic, WebSphere, okay, JBoss, right? Wildfly, right? There are so many things actually. Right? Tom, some of Tom you might Cat. have heard about Tomcat. Jetty. Right? Jetty, right? Very good. Netty, right? Yeah. Now, these are popular names nowadays, actually. These are not older things, actually. Uh, you must have heard about something called Glassfish. So now, I'm telling you, what is the what is the difference between WebLogic and uh, Tomcat? This you should also know. Actually, Glassfish implement all the specification of J2E. WebLogic also implement everything. And WebLogic also support EJBs and all those things. And that's why these products are very, very heavy. Okay, there's this, this. This was very heavy. But what's the beauty of uh, Tomcat? Tomcat is more lightweight because Tomcat only implements servlet JSP. And Tomcat still so useful actually. Are you able to understand? So J2E was not gone 100%. Some part of it's still useful. Yes or no? Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's just like that. Uh, people are... Uh, and I've seen many people. They say, okay, we don't want to learn servlet JSP. Let me directly see a YouTube video on uh, Spring Boot and we are a Spring Boot developer. I say this is not like that. Okay, you will never understand how Spring Boot works internally if you don't understand servlet. Okay, Spring Boot internally use uh, dispatcher servlet, right? Okay, anyway, so uh, I hope you get the idea. But this ecosystem become very heavy because of EJB. Okay, EJB was used to do distributed computing. And then a, another ecosystem become very popular that is called open source. In open source, a framework become very popular, whose name is Spring, Hibernate, and Struts. 
if somebody is a software engineer from 2010, he should uh, second my thought process that uh, this is what the case. Spring was very popular. Okay, Hibernate. Okay, there's Sturts. something called Sturts. Sturts. Okay. Yeah, before Spring, and, Sturts was famous. Yeah, yeah. No, actually, both are complement. Uh, both are uh, uh, both comes at the almost same time, right? Only thing is that Sturts become obsolete too fast. Okay, all these frameworks comes around 2003. Okay, so Sturts was uh, killed by Spring MVC because Spring MVC was a component of Spring. It was so better than Strut that nobody talk about this. Still, some company have maintenance project. Okay, so the engineers are struggling to migrate into Spring Boot, right? So now I hope you are able to connect the dots. And if we talk about typical three tier application, okay, so typical three tier application, and this is your database, right? So what I'm trying to say, uh, uh, you can comparison, right? Okay, let me give you an analogy. I think you can understand in one go if I show you that analogy, right? India map, right? Let's see. So what I'm trying to say that this is a map of India. And there's a wonderful place in India that's called Kerala, right? Okay, Kochi. Everybody is, uh, every place is wonderful, but I really love South India, although I'm a North Indian. Okay, but what is happening? So what is the relationship between uh, Kerala and India? You say, Raji, what's the stupid? Uh, Kerala is just part of India, right? Same thing I'm saying that, what is the difference between Hibernate and Spring? This is very common confusion, Hibernate versus Spring. So try to understand, Hibernate is a framework which fit only in Dowlayer, right? Let's assume there's a political party which is there only in one state, right? Thing like that, okay? So Hibernate have control only in which layer? Dowlayer, but Spring is a bigger framework. It fit in every layer, okay? Do you understand? A spring fit in every layer, okay? And that's why spring is called architect, uh, spring is called uh, uh, enterprise framework, enterprise framework, because it fit everywhere actually, right? Here you have spring MVC, okay? MVC, you have spring security, right? Lots of things. This is actually your web layer. In service layer, you apply so many things actually. AOP fit everywhere, but especially in service layer, Okay, you apply messaging. Okay, you applying web service. Okay, lots of things actually. Okay, lots of business logic you put into service layer. And Dow layer, you say Dow layer. What's the use of uh, Spring in Dow layer? Sir, Hibernate was there. Actually, Spring act as a bigger brother, bigger brother to any other framework. Any other framework. Okay, so what is Big Brother is called in South India? Anna, <laughs> I, I, is I'm right or wrong? Is somebody yeah, from South yeah, India? Yeah, Anna, Anna, yeah. Anna, Anna. Yeah, Anna. Hmm. In North, uh, we call it Bada Bhaiya, right? Okay, so guys, right? Okay, so what I'm trying to tell you that Spring is just like Anna of all the framework. Okay, he said to Hibernate, "Are Hibernate Bhaiya, don't worry." You have some boilerplate code. Hey, Hibernate, you have some, you have some what? Some boilerplate code. Let me simplify that code. Okay, so Spring act as a Anna or Bada Bhaiya to reduce the complexity of other framework. Okay, so Spring is helping to configure, configure other frameworks. Frameworks. That's why, very important interview answer, a spring also called glue framework. A spring is also called glue framework. You got the idea, guys? Right? So now let me cut down the story to short. What is spring? Spring is a framework which was there to simplify J2E. Spring is there to simplify, simplify Java software development. Okay? It is used to it is used to act as a glue framework. Okay, it is providing providing a fundamental thing dependency injection. It it is providing a fundamental thing that is called that is called what AOP. It is providing a fundamental thing that is called what reduction of boilerplate code. Reduction of 
boiler plate core, right? So now you, you don't know DIY, you do, may not know where AOP. And you leave it to me, you just need to listen carefully. And whenever you are sitting, have a copy pen and note down. Okay, right, okay. So anyway, so this is what, uh, let me go back to our PPT. So where it was, it was here somewhere, right? Have I closed that? Right. So now this PPT uh, will be enough for up to Spring Boot, right? Okay. I will share the access of that. Spring and Spring Boot both are framework only then. Then what is the difference, right? Okay. So Lakshmi is asking me what is the difference between Spring and Spring Boot, right? Okay. Wonderful question, right? So just give me 10 minutes. Let me read out this PPT and you will get answer. Okay. So that is what. So, right. Very good. So now... I am not able to increase the font size yet. Kya ho gaya Should I refresh it? I think you need to download it. Or not. Ah, okay. Uh, anyway, so what I will do actually, I already must have downloaded somewhere. And the downloaded, okay, where is that? Uh, Spring Framework, Spring Boot Workshop, right? I think this should be the thing. Okay, so I do have a uh, things to draw. Okay, so I'm zooming, but it's not happening. Now I think uh, it's better, right? Okay, so I was telling you, uh, so there was a question, Rajiv, what's the difference between spring and spring boot actually? Okay, just uh, stay uh, 10 minutes with me, you will get the answer. Okay, so what is what is the agenda of this uh, session? Understanding spring framework. I've already taught you a little bit, what is spring framework? Let me read out the notes. Okay, spring framework help developer develop various type of application using Java platform. Okay, it support POJO based model. It was there to simplify Java EE. It act as a glue framework. I forgot to write this line. It support dependency injection. It support AOP. Okay, it support reduction of boilerplate code and it is having POJO based software development, right? Now, why Spring Framework? The main goal of Spring Framework is the simplicity or simplification of software development. What is dependency injection? Okay, dependency injection is a design pattern. Okay. I will come back to this. This is a typical answer. You remember this answer. I will explain everything, but sometime remembering will also help you to crack the interview. Okay, then we discuss AOP. Just give me a few minutes. Let me tell you the answer. What's the difference between Spring and Spring Boot? This is a very funny slide that says that Spring is just like Favicol. It's just like glue. Okay, and if you read this, you will understand there's no framework in this world which cannot be integrated with the Spring framework. So spring act as a glue. If you understand Hindi, what I've written here, chutki mein chipka hai. This is the advertisement of Favicol, right? So that means uh, spring framework can be used with any other framework, right? Okay, any framework of the world can be integrated with the spring framework. Okay, you understand, say, we understand Rajiv, what, what is the difference? Everybody is talking about spring boot, okay? See, actually, can you have, uh, can you have what is called, uh, uh, what I should say. Can you have paneer without milk, right? Not possible, no? Okay, so you have milk and then you have paneer, right? Okay, so, so same thing I'm saying here. Spring is a fundamental framework. Spring is a fundamental framework. It has so many components, actually. So many components. The problem with the spring framework is that it is so big. So big. And so many components. Okay, it is big and so many components. Okay, so let me say it is big and so many component. Because it has so many component, making a project with plain vanilla, plain, plain vanilla spring is complicated. Okay, because you have to add so many jar files, spring MVC jar files, spring web jar file and whatnot. And then you have to write lots of XML or configuration code, actually. So what programmer says, hey, we don't want to write this. Because framework should be rapid application development, right? What's the use of framework if I have to write lots of code to configure the framework itself? So that's why Spring team come up with a framework and they call it Spring Boot. So Spring Boot is a abstraction over Spring Framework. Can you answer this question in interview, guys? 
Yes, no? Spring Boot is a abstraction over what? Spring Framework. Right? So, and you can see this cake analogy. It is difficult to create the cake, okay, if you are not mastered into this. It's easy to tweak the ready-made cake, right? So, Spring Boot is just like ready-made cake. You don't have to do much configuration. It is rapid application development tool. Okay. Under the hood, under the hood, under the hood, Spring Boot is Spring only. Okay. Later on, I will teach you that Spring Boot equal to Spring minus extra bean configuration, extra bean configuration. So don't ask me what I write. I will prove you by tomorrow. So spring, or my, not by tomorrow, then day after that, right? Okay, so I request you uh, to focus on the agenda of this training. I will share you the prerequisites material. And because last day I was thinking if I try to cover every prerequisites, uh, we will lose the interest into this training, right? Okay, so please work hard. Okay, there's no shortcut. If any trainer says that, okay, join my course and only learn which I'm teaching you, that will be enough. Answer is no. But I'm saying whatever I return into my course, I will teach you. But whatever things I'm suggesting you, please read. Okay, you can take my help, right? But ultimately, you need to study. Okay, my WhatsApp number is there to you. Okay, so whenever you struggle with some topics, any suggestion, you just... Uh, simply write the message to my WhatsApp. I am always trying to help you out. Okay, so let me continue <clears throat> understanding. Okay, today we forget to take the break. Okay, we'll take a few minutes. Uh, don't worry. So spring boot is equal to spring minus extra bean configuration. Plus what? Embedded Tomcat. Embedded Tomcat. It was a very painful experience if you have learned Servlet JSP. You have to configure the Tomcat with your ID. Sometime it crash. Sometime port binding problem is happening. Lots of problem actually. Okay. Another problem with the application is application monitoring. Okay, so Spring Boot supports something called Actuator. Actuator is a wonderful tool, right? You just need to put the dependency in Vola. You, you can monitor your application. You can see thread dump. You can see memory consumption and whatnot. Okay, so basically Spring Boot is a de facto standard to create microservice. Okay, so that's why I will not put too much effort on Core Spring, but I will tell you essential Core Spring so that you understand Spring Boot. Okay, so now I will tell you another analogy to understand correctly. So one thing, okay, so I, I remember uh, Lulu Mall in Kochi, right, although it's suggesting me in uh, Lucknow also. So once I was there in for some company training and I visited this mall and I was thinking I should have more money to purchase everything, right? Okay, so if you go to Lulu Mall, if you have money in your pocket, you can purchase anything. The same thing I'm telling you about Spring Boot. So there is a site called Spring Initializer. I told you Spring is a glue framework. So there's no technology of the world which cannot be used with the Spring Boot. Okay, guys, you understand? For example, you want to use web, right? You can use it, right? You want to use, uh, for example, MySQL. You can use it, right? You want to use <clears throat> uh, what it called uh, uh, MongoDB. MongoDB. You can use it, right? You want to use uh, a RabbitMQ, right? We'll cover all these things actually. RabbitMQ is a big topic. We have something called Kafka, right? Okay. So there's something. Right? There's no framework which you can connect. Even you can connect with AI also. I have not explored it. But if you, uh, I'm, I'm in process. I will try to cover this. It would be my own learning while teaching you, right? So Azure Open API, well, there's everything supported, right? This is the big, biggest ecosystem. Okay, so what I'm trying to say, okay, so um, Spring Boot is what? Is number one framework, right? Okay, number one framework in Java industry, right? But nowadays, there are some competitors for that also, right? Okay, there's a competitor that is quite uh, popular nowadays, Quarkus. Okay, so we have Quarkus, Spring Boot, okay? And even we have other product also like Micronaut, okay, Helidon, which is very popular. I train the people of Oracle, right? They heavily use uh, Helidon, right? So, I mean to say, once you understand the Spring Boot, learning those things uh, would be easier. 
because ultimately those people are clone of uh, means they have taken the idea of spring boot but uh, they have some better startup time in some of the cases right okay uh, uh, do i have answer your question what's the difference between spring and spring boot yes no yeah okay. okay so that is the idea right okay so now what i want to do right i want to move little bit further right so you can you can uh, read this actually right so spring core right so what is the agenda uh, tomorrow actually tomorrow will focus on spring core so without understanding di moving on spring boot is a you mean wednesday idea. right uh, yeah yeah i mean to say right next day means whatever the next class right okay so uh, we would have the class on wednesday right okay so i think everybody is sure that we have a class on sunday okay saturday and wednesday the timing is 8 to 10 because you are free from your office work okay so and that's why more and more professional can join that's why i keep on the keep this time okay so i think what uh, we deserve i think we deserve five minute break uh is it okay yes no five minute break yes no okay. hello yeah yeah tell me yeah, is it possible on Sunday and Saturday we can have the batch on the morning? Sunday, Saturday batch in the morning, right? Okay, what yes. other people are saying, right? Boating, boating. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> it's right the best now, time. Am, you know? Right now, I'm available. Yeah, morning on will Saturday be good. Time. Morning will be good, I guess. Okay. Morning, morning, right? Boating or a live boating, right? Don't miss your chance, right? Okay. <laughs> I think evening is at what, evening, uh, evening what is time in the morning. I mean, can we can we confirm on what time in the morning we are suggesting? Okay, if it is in morning, uh, then Saturday Sunday would be morning. Right now I'm free. Okay, I'm comfortable with both the timing. Right. Okay. Uh, if it is in morning, it would be uh, it would be uh, nine to eleven. Right. Nine to eleven morning. Right. Okay. Yeah, that on, would be perfect. On, on Wednesday it would be eight to ten. Right. Wednesday it would yeah, be eight yeah. to ten. Right. Okay. So uh, uh, Niranjan Reddy is saying, uh, okay, but Satya is saying evening, right? Many people are saying evening, evening. Now there is a fight. You do one thing, take the address of each other and fight together. And who are the winner? Inform me. We can, we, <laughs> sir, we can do the voting in the like uh, WhatsApp group, nah? like whatever goes with the majority. Ah, well, yeah, yeah we can do that. Yeah, we ah. can do that. Okay. Because oh. Saturday, Sunday, there is no job, right? Everyone is almost free in the morning. Yeah, actually, some guess, people yeah. from US, actually, I think they have some, their own obligation, right? Okay, so no problem. Yeah. Uh, let me take five minute break. Okay, no problem. Right? Okay, okay, fine. Otherwise, also, if you miss the class, recording is always there. And one thing I forgot to tell you, this recording would be uh, for lifetime. Many institutes, they say what, one year, two year. Are, why hell do you say one year? Let's say one year, he don't need spring framework. All of a sudden, he need recording. And then again, he have to pay the fees. This is stupid. Anyway, so we meet after five minutes. Bye for now. Hey, can someone help me with the uh, WhatsApp group link? I will share in the chat. Wait, I will share. Okay, thanks. Uh, I guess only Sir can share it because it is not allowed to be shared by anyone else. Then you can ask after break. Sir. Okay, okay, fine.
So guys, uh, welcome back. So enough fight, actually. People are saying morning, evening, right? Okay, I think better we should keep as it is, right? This is how we design, right? Isn't it? Guys, okay, let me not disturb the flow. Okay, but the uh, another batch I will start, uh, it would be for Core Java, interview preparations. Okay, so that would be morning, right? Okay, so uh, if you want to join. Uh, it would not be uh, from now. It would be any time next month, right? Okay, so hope I'm audible. Anybody can confirm? Yeah, Rajin. Okay, so, uh, so now we are doing the subject, right? What's the most important subject? Understanding dependency injection correctly. Okay, so we want to understand what is dependency injection and why I should care about it, right? So you see that these are some slide I was showing you. Let me read this actually, right? So what it says, uh, there's a funny uh, symbol of uh, injection, right? So as the name suggests, dependency injection is a design pattern actually. So what is the advantage of this design pattern? This design pattern allow you to have loosely coupled application. Okay, let me write here, due to DI pattern, Okay, a application can be loosely coupled, loosely coupled, right? Okay, so what it means, let me show you with a practical example, right? So what practical example I want to tell you, I want to take the example of a bank application, okay? That would be our project also. So, and we follow incremental model as we discussed, right? So I want to create three tier application, okay? So I want to create three tier application, just a minute, web layer, service layer, persistence layer. So, and then we have database, right? So we have web layer, service layer, and persistence layer. Persistence layer, persistence layer, and this is database, right? So in real life, whenever we write the code, we follow three tier architecture. And in the web layer, you normally apply Spring MVC, Spring MVC, right? In service layer, we write business logic, okay? Persistence layer, we are also calling DAO layer, where we have database interaction, DB interaction. Okay, right? So this is what. Now, what I'm trying to say, many times people understand, oh, Spring MVC, I have heard about it, in web layer, you can apply this. But many times people don't understand the difference between service layer and persistence layer. What is the difference? People don't get, uh, people get confused. So try to understand persistence layer only talk about interaction with the database. Talk about interaction with the database. Database, right? It don't have don't have business logic. Have business logic. Now, what do you mean by business logic? Business logic means logic of business for which customer is paying you money. He's saying you that oh, right a bank module where I want to transfer the money from account A to account B and don't forget it should be secure. Transaction management should be done properly. Uh, logging should be done properly. This is what business requirements, right? That is also called use case in UML diagrams. So what I'm trying to tell you guys is that business logic is applied in service layer. So what is service layer? Service layer is the brain of your application, which is the most important part of your body. So every part is important, but you know what is there over our shoulder is the most important part. Yes or no? Right? So our brain decides how we think, how we behave. So you can think like this, service layer is the brain of your application. Okay? Service layer is the brain of your application. No AI can replace service layer. Okay? So service layer contains the business logic plus something called cross-cutting concern. Raji, what do you mean by cross-cutting concern? Security. Okay? Transaction. Okay? Logging. Logging, caching, right? Okay, even sec security, even exception handling, right? So many things actually. Okay, exception handling. Don't think it is X handling, right? Many boys may be thinking, oh, it is not X handling. This is exception handling, right? <laughs> okay, so these are called cross cutting concern, guys. You understand? Okay, so we'll see here how to solve this cross cutting concern. AOP is the best approach. What is AOP? You learn uh, in next to next lecture. Okay, so I can give one analogy so that you never forget. Think about a chemist shop, right? Okay, shop in uh, India, right? Something like this. Okay, so you see that, see any local, think about any chemist shop nearby your area. So there may be a shopkeeper. Let's say his name is Krishna Uncle. 
and he may have some Ramu Shamu, right? Okay, so what is happening? Who will decide, right, whether to give discount, give a discount to a customer or not? This Krishna uncle, Ramu Shamu is just like assistant. They just assist him. Same thing, Are Bhai, Dao layer is just an assistant. He is like Ramu and Shamu. Who is the main actor? Service layer. I am not saying Dao layer is zero, but Dao layer is, can be automized. We don't need any AI to automate Dao layer. Funny thing is that we need Spring Data. Okay, wonderful project. So what is Spring Data? The spring Data can automate. Automate what? Dao layer. You don't have to write Dao layer. You need to declare the Dao layer. Declare the Dao layer. Okay. So many people are worried, too much worried about AI. Okay. Even many stupid people, they say what? Now chat GPT is there. We don't have to learn algorithm. Are somebody have applied algorithm to write chat GPT? Correct or not? Tell me. Yes. So yes. these tools, these tools are there just to help us out, right? Okay. Human will always be there. The only thing is that smart guy will earn double money and the foolish guy will lose their job, right? Although sometimes because of circumstances, anybody can lose a job. But I'm just trying to tell you, if we don't move with the time, uh, we cannot survive in this IT industry. This is how it is designed. Okay, and we have chosen this, now. We have chosen this because we know that we can earn more salary into this, right? Anyway, why I'm discussing. But I'm trying to tell you that Dow layer can be optimized using something called Spring Data. So let me try to mimic a small bank application. Okay, and what I want to do, I want to start from scratch, right? So that's what, what I will do. This is your repository. This is module one, right? So module one, we have this discussion cheat sheet. So whatever JNIT, Log4j, DI, whatever I explain, I will have the cheat sheet. You can refer this. The cheat sheet would have the Maven dependency. Don't remember Maven dependency here, but why hell we should remember? Okay, so let me try to paste. Try to remember less, try to understand more. Okay, I will tell you my cheat sheet. Okay, there are lots of cheat sheet I've designed. You just need to follow when you are doing practice. Even if I don't want to learn something new, let's say some particular day. So what I will do, I open my cheat sheet and practice myself. Okay, practice is important. So what I do, I have created a backup of this project. Now what I do, I delete the unnecessary thing from this project, right? Let me delete every silly thing from this application. Is it okay? Right? And what I do, I delete this branch also for testing, right? I'm not doing it. Okay. And because I want to write a bank application, so what I will do, I will refactor and rename to, okay, all directories. So I say here com.busycoder.what dot dot bank app. Okay. So this would be a bank application, right? So what I will do, I will create a three tier architect. So many people might be new to this, right? But this is not a new architect. Okay, so whenever you create a project, you follow a directory structure. Okay, you are not creating a small house, you are creating a big building, right? So you have to follow the directory structure. So we can create a directory structure like this DAO. Okay, we can create a package. Okay, package here dot service. See, I'm a lazy guy. Good engineer should be lazy in typing, not in thinking. So what I'm trying to say, I'm not right clicking and typing the whole package name i'm not foolish guy i'm right clicking here and then writing the package name so that i have to write less so i need to design dao layer service layer controller and then what i do actually i will also write a package that is called dto so dao stand for data access object dto stand for data transfer object so dao dto are part of dao layer some people also call domain object okay I can also create a package that is called exception. Exception. So all the exceptions of this project may be there in this package, right? I can also write a package util. Some a AOP related code might be there. Okay. So hope you understand. This is the package structure. Uh, I can add more. Okay. As the time progress. Then what I will do. Okay. So you have the JNU test case. I, I'm not going to write at least now. We'll do unit testing while we are using Spring Boot, right? Let me remove the Lombok dependency. Oh, sorry, Lombok, no, no. This is what? Uh, log back actually, right? Okay, so now this is the dependency for uh, loggers. And yesterday I was telling you, you can put the dependency of Spring Framework. So give me answer. 
Okay, I'm asking a question. Spring is a smaller framework or bigger framework? Bada framework hai, chota framework hai spring. Tell me. Guys, is it smaller or bigger? Yes. It's a combination. Yeah, actually spring is a big framework, right? Big, it has so many modules. Different model. Yeah, definitely. Somebody is saying big, right? Yes. It has so it's many modules. Right? Yeah, so. Spring and boot is, is the part of spring, right? Spring, yeah, you can say Spring Boot is just a wrapper on Spring Framework. It makes the life easy. Okay. You you see that uh, you have to peel the fruit and then you have to eat it. And rather than your wife give you a uh, glass of juice, right? Okay. So that is what. Think, think, think in that way, right? So what I was telling you, uh, there may be some slide. Let me come there. So uh, we'll understand AOP gradually. Don't worry about this. So we have understood what is spring, spring related to what, what is spring, okay. What's the main advantage of spring? I'm just also covering the essential theory so that when you read it, you should understand. Just covering uh, code is not enough, no? we should also read out some small theory, okay. So this is what, what's the advantage of DI? I will show you practically rather than reading it out, okay. Why spring boot? Because if you're not using spring boot, you have to write lots of configuration. So by next one or two class, you understand we really need spring boot. Okay, then you yourself say, sir, move to Spring Boot, right? Okay, and then what is Spring Boot? Spring Boot is a wrapper on Spring Framework. Okay, okay, so anyway, so that is what. Yeah, this is the picture I was looking for. So Spring has so many modules like JDBC, AOP, Spring Core, ORM, JE, Web. So itself is a big, big framework. Okay. What it does mainly? Dependency injection. Okay, Rajiv, what is dependency injection? I am coming on that, right? So we have created the project structure. I was telling you, Spring is a very big project. It may have tons of dependency. And let's say you're not using Spring Boot. Then finding those dependency is nightmare. Okay. For example, let's say we talk about uh, DOSA pack, right? Let's say you want to create a DOSA. Okay. So I love it. So, But my wife doesn't know much better. So what she followed, she follows some... YouTube's and they are using MTR and all those things and they she created good dosa right I love that so what it means actually dosa pack may have some starting ingredient right she don't have to search in the market to look all these starting ingredients true or false true right same thing if we are using spring framework we are not using spring food boot for now but if you are using spring framework itself it has so many dependencies so there's a concept in May 1 that is called bill of material. Say with me, what is the concept? Bill of material. So this guy, bell dung is very, very popular. Okay. You can always rely his tutorials, right? So what I'm trying to convey here that rather than giving the dependency of spring one by one. So what I can do, I can copy this and this is a special tag and let me paste it and then I read it out. This is called, okay, no, 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 I don't have to read it out. I have to go down. He must be giving the bill of material of Spring. You can also find from Maven repository. So what he is suggesting me, rather than putting the dependency like this, you can directly use Rajiv's bill of material. So bill of material is just like dosa pack. It have all the material which may be used in Spring core like BI, AOP, Spring JDBC, Spring Hibernate, Spring MVC. Yes, guys, are you understanding? So what I just did, done here, I just click this by pressing my control button of my, uh, what it called, keyboard. Now you see all the dependencies. So you don't have to remember them. See, you can simply copy that and come here. And then what you can do within this dependency, you can paste this. But you don't have to mention version, how beautiful it is. Because version would be mentioned, a version would be maintained by bill of material. Yes, no? Are you happy with this? And this version, what I can do, if I have to change, I have to scroll down. Always look for loose coupling. Right? Okay. So what I can do here, I can say that spring version. Okay. So I can mention it here, for example. And then I can take this. I can take this. So, and then what I can use here, I can use the dollar symbol 
and then I can use this way, right? Beautiful. So now let's say you need spring context. So spring context is the main dependency for dependency injection. Beside that, we may need more actually, right? So just click this here and you get spring bean, right? You get spring bean, right? So spring bean is there, spring context is there, spring context support is there, spring core is there, okay? Although they pull transitively, but you can put it, right? Now, do you have to remember the versions? Bill of material is your friend or not? Tell me, guys. Yes, guys. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now what you can do, you can uh, see this. Uh, this is small m appear on this side. So, so what is uh, going to happen? In real-time project, uh, should we put this dependency management? Like, uh, yeah, yeah. This is good programming practice. You should use bill of material if you are not using Spring Boot for Spring Framework. This is good programming practice. Is it understood, guys? Everybody? Yes. Uh, so sir, uh, I just have a I just have a small doubt. Actually, yeah. uh, I, I have not used IntelliJ IDEA before, so I have I have a small doubt. Like you can see the M on the right side of your uh, of yeah. Your, this yeah. is this yeah. is. Yeah, I have my Maven installed in my system, but it's in the IntelliJ ID. It is not showing me that symbol. Am I right? Is there anything you can make, like okay. let me know how? To... See, yeah, yeah. B basically, what is happening? You have some installation issues, right? So, what is my advice? You remove that IntelliJ ID first. You install JDK, okay? You install Maven, and configure the build path. Configure the build path. So you okay, can so, go to uh... my YouTube channel. Okay, okay. Yeah. How to you configure the build path? The environment like variable. Environment variable. Have you configured yeah, I have done I have done that path and in home both of them, but actually I installed Maven after installing the IntelliJ ID. Is that no no yeah yeah that is the problem. You just remove throw it okay. out that and reinstall it. First you must uh, configure M2 underscore home. Okay. So if you have not done it, follow my YouTube video, you can find those videos. Okay. okay. So you you see that. Uh, in some of the video, I, I need to search there. Somewhere I was explaining you how to uh, install the software, right? I think that maybe in Hindi, uh, if you understand Hindi, you can uh, use that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that should be somewhere in the module one, okay? I have started okay, that, that on this also. You see that? Cloud native application development. So I will also create this on YouTube, right? But it will take time, okay? So here somewhere I'm talking about how to do it, right? You can search and... Let me know. If you are still struggling, you ping me on WhatsApp. Group actually, right? Okay. Because there are so many people, they will help you out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. So very anyone good. got that, uh, how to uh, set up all the uh, softwares, please ping in the group. I, yeah, I yeah, because yeah. this is not difficult actually. You can find, and by the way, let me tell you one very good YouTuber actually, right? Uh, even uh, most of the time I'm using Bindo recently, for example, I was having difficulty putting a Docker desktop in window because I'm I'm not using Windows. So what I search on YouTube actually, uh, Docker window installation, window 11 installation. So what I found, I found a YouTuber which is very, very popular and his suggestion never failed for me, actually programming knowledge, right? Okay, I don't mind to suggest other YouTubers also. Yes, no. Okay, so I follow him blindly and uh, it never failed for me, right? So because uh, I I used to use uh, Ubuntu actually, right? Okay, so I will even move to Ubuntu after a few days because there's some problem in my laptop and company people are saying, no, no, you have to use Windows. I think I told you already. Anyway, so this is uh, the thing. Let me go back to the topic. We have only five minutes left, okay? So what I'm trying to tell you, this is the bill of material, okay, which you need to put here. So once you put the bill of material, you see that you have all the external jar file, which should be there actually, right? Bean, AOP, and context. Actually, even you don't have to mention spring core because spring core is a transitive dependency of spring context. Okay, so now question is that, what is the requirement of spring actually? So to save your time, what I did, I created the some skeleton of my bank application. So right now I'm not using database. Okay, so first of all, I want to create an account class. Okay, guys, because I want to keep the information about ID and all those things actually. Okay, and this bank application would be uh, complicated in few days actually. And I will follow incremental model. Is that fine, guys? Yes, no? 
okay so please i will keep backup of every attempt actually so that you can use it so private double although we can use big decimal for now it is okay so uh, so you can create getter setter manually okay you can say generate getter setter. But actually, rather than manually creating getter setter, we have a wonderful tool that is called Lombok. What's the name? Guys, say with me. Lombok. What is Lombok? Lombok is a framework, it's a small framework which automatically generate getter setter for you. It's good? Yes, it's good. So what do you need to do? You need to go to Maven repository. So what is Lombok? Lombok is nothing special. It simply create getter setter all those boilerplate code for you. This word I'm using frequently in my teaching boilerplate, boilerplate. So boilerplate means ceremony code. Boilerplate code means ceremony code. How much time taken in Indian marriage? Five days, but it can be done in one hours or even twenty minutes in a course. Yes or no? Okay. So Lombok is a framework which reduce your course. Whenever I say boilerplate code means extra code, ceremony code. Okay, so I need to copy this. Okay, and uh, guys, some people are requesting me on uh, to share this videos on YouTube, right? But you know, uh, we we have to manage our families, right? So uh, everything cannot be free, right? Okay, so uh, I'm just saying it for my YouTube audience, right? Maybe they listen this video, so you will not find any videos after that, or maybe one more video, God knows. Okay, so now what is happening? This is actually, I'm putting the Lombok dependency. I say Maven update, okay? If you are sh not sure that it's not updated, you just click this button actually, right? So now Lombok is there. Lombok is beautiful. Now what you can do? You simply apply at the rate getters, right? Voila, all the getter would be there. If you say at the rate setter, all the setters would be there. No argument constructor, okay? All argument constructor equal and hash code right you got the idea okay so these things are automatically produced you don't have to say get a setter equal hash code you don't want to say these things again and again no? these three things so rather than writing these three line of annotation we can write at the rate data wonderful when you say that at the rate data your boilerplate get a setter constructor everything this create getter setter and equal and hash code. I want no default constructor. I want parameterized constructor. I need builder design pattern. Okay, so I can say builder. Okay. Uh, sir, is there any way like, uh, for example, when we add that annotation at the rate data, right? Then uh, we can't see the getter and setter that it has created, right? Or yeah, we can yeah, see yeah. that also. We can, we don't have to see actually, there may be a trick, but I'm not very sure. But you see that if you hover on the data, it will tell you what it produced actually. It produced getter setter and all those things, right? Even it produced required okay. argument constructor, right? You you can see that very easily. Let me tell you, you go to the controller and write a demo class, right? Go to demo class and then you write account object. Account, okay? Account, account is equal to new account, right? And then what you do here, you say here account dot, Account dot R and the setter getter everything is there. Yes, no. Tell me. Right, right. Yeah, got it. Hmm. Actually, it produced the code on the fly. Okay, it it produced the code on the fly. It used something called Java reflection. I think uh, if you were there, okay, in the uh, last video, uh, last session, I discussed one thing on my YouTube channel. Perhaps I close that page. Uh, I'd shown you a core Java playlist. In the core Java playlist, there's a wonderful video that is called Annotation and Java Reflection. What is the concept? Annotation and what? Java Reflection. What is Java Reflection? Right? This is wonderful core Java topic. Right? Reflection in mirror, right? Okay. You see your own reflection in the mirror, right? Okay. Same thing. If you want to know metadata of a class at runtime, reflection is used. Okay, all the Java framework internally use reflection. So if you want to know how a framework works, you must listen that video. It may be around one hour, 40 minutes, right? Okay, does it make sense? Yes, no? Yeah, got it. Okay, so what I'm trying to tell you that uh, you people just Try to uh, polish yourself, whatever I suggest to you, okay? 
so I think within three and four months, you will see a drastic change in CU, right? And um, uh, the purpose of uh, the classroom training or joining a batch, right? Although you may find these material on YouTube here and there also. The purpose of uh, having in the class is that if person is pulling your legs, actually, chalo, chalo, try to move with me, right? So that's what the purpose. Any question before I wind up? We continue with this uh, bank application in the next session, right? Uh, I have a small doubt. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, uh, if you, uh, before the break, you taught the assertions, right? Yeah, yeah, assertion, yeah. Assertions, yeah. In that, you directly use without calling through object because you, uh, you told it is static. Mm -hmm. is it? Yeah, actually, assertion is not static. Assertion is a class. Within that, you have a static method. If you want to call the static method, you don't have to create object of that class. This is correct, the correct. concept of static. But, yeah, but if we don't uh, create the object, we call it through the class, right? Uh, directly through the class name. Yeah. If yeah. I'm not wrong. And when I but, do uh, in, yeah. But there we were using directly only the method name. We were not calling it through class. That was yeah, a little confusing for. Uh, because we have used static import and compiler is intelligent enough, right? Okay. Compiler okay. maps okay. the static import and the method called together. Compiler ah, okay. becomes Got intelligent it. day by day, isn't it? Ah, okay. Got it. Got it. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Any other questions, guys? Hey, Raju Rahul, this right. Uh, can you uh, add me to the WhatsApp group? Pardon? Uh, uh, what are you saying? I'm saying, uh, can you add me to the WhatsApp group which you have created? Okay, actually, uh, uh, this is a paid training. I don't know whether you have paid uh, amount and need to not, right? I got no. Okay. Ping me separately. If you have paid the fees, you are most welcome. Otherwise, also, oh. I'm putting the things on YouTube here and there. You can refer them. Okay, okay. Yeah. Any other question, guys? Although I will put this uh, video on YouTube, right? So, uh, Rajiv, uh, yeah, yeah, please tell me. Yeah, so this Lombok, can we use in production? Yeah, yeah, it is production ready actually, right? Okay, so you can see uh, more about Lombok. Lombok, okay, Lombok, right? Just see that uh, this is a small framework, industry standard framework. This is open source, okay? And uh, this is the website, and it is used by all the all the companies actually, right? I'm training more than fifty companies actually. Most of the time, I uh, teach the senior level managers, right? Every company is using it, as per my knowledge, right? And because uh, they, it simply saves the boilerplate work, actually. Okay, that's it. And nowadays, actually, in Java seventeen, there is a concept. We wind up the session in a minute. There is a concept called record actually. Records in Java seventeen, right? So it is a wonderful concept, but record have some restriction. Okay, record have very less source. Okay, if you see some image, might be I able to explain you. Okay, so you simply say like this. Okay, uh, like class student extend record. So uh, this is not explained in a beautiful way. Anyway, what it's trying to say, you you write like this. This is how you write public record person, right? So what is the advantage of record? It have less boilerplate code. Okay. So then you say, Array, why we are using Lombok? Because uh, uh, the record is not enough because uh, all the data of record is uh, final. You cannot change them afterwards, right? Okay. So all the record is there. You can use record in some of the DTO2 exchange JSON to the user, but most of the time we need a regular object. And when you need a regular object, you have horrible lots of code, right? And that horrible code can be reduced by Lombok. It is production ready. Many companies are using it. Right, you can talk within your organized company uh, team meeting also. Any other question, guys? Raji, do you plan to change the timings for Saturday, Sunday, or shall we discuss this on Wednesday? Yeah, we can check it out, but you know what is happening. Uh, uh, the people uh, actually, this is how we have uh, designed this batch, right? Let's see what we can do, right? Okay, but I don't yeah, think uh, I just have, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, so you know, what are middlewares and like uh, uh, Tomcat is a middleware, so may no, know Tomcat like is not exactly. A Tomcat okay, is not a middleware. Yeah, you okay. have misconcept, right? So you see that mm -hmm. what I was saying that Tomcat is simply a web container. This is also a very important interview question. We'll add this tomorrow, actually, right? Okay, so there's a concept called web servers. Okay, there's a concept called web container, and there's something called middleware. Okay, so middleware is a older uh, things actually nowadays people are moving to microservice there was a concept of service oriented architect maybe you have heard about it okay so middleware is a solution which is basically integration solution 
Okay, so it's a totally different subject. Okay, so when we talk about Tomcat, Tomcat is simply a web container. We simply execute a dynamic script and give me a data on the fly. Okay, so if you, uh, by the way, if you understand Hindi, I don't know uh, the person uh, who is asking me the question. So you can go to my uh, my YouTube channel actually, right? Okay, you can go to, I closed it actually. That is a different account I'm operating. Okay, so if you understand Hindi, I don't know, uh, but you will find a beautiful explanation of all these things. Let me show you in one of the playlists. Okay, so um, so this channel is not popular, doesn't mean it have a good material, right? It's just a matter of popularities, right? You may be understanding. So what I'm saying that you can find one playlist, which is very, very well designed, actually. This is, uh, this is a goal if you never have done this, actually, right? So uh, that is what this particular playlist okay so is this tomcat raji yeah so tomcat is a web container right so what is happening if you understand hindi this is our design in hindi i will soon take a workshop on servlet jsp right so you people can also join in right okay so you see that you will find a, a good explanation of what is java j2e what is servlet what is tomcat how internally it works everything right okay maybe these videos may be helpful to you okay Yes. Any other uh, things where I can help you? Uh, where we can find the codes used by you? While, uh, GitHub, uh, GitHub. It is there on the GitHub, right? I will push the code and you can bookmark this repository. Okay. okay. This is the repository. You can uh, star it, right? Kind of. Okay. So, uh, you no, shared no, this, this link. Not, oh. not this one. Just a minute. Yeah, this is this is one, right? Let me share the link again. Yeah, yeah that will help. Okay, so hopefully a uh, uh, session was useful, right? Okay, so we meet uh, now in the next class, right? Okay, so bye for now. Good night. Take care. Uh, sir, 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 there is just one more request. Uh, yeah. Sir, can you upload the like recording in one or two hours or like will it take again time? Yeah, actually what is happening, uh, uh, time is uh, 10, 10 actually, right? So normally yeah, okay. I'm a person who sleep by 10.30. But uh, uh, because you know what is happening when this recording actually take almost 30 minutes to download from Zoom itself. Yes or no? Yeah, yeah, because it's big, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I will try to, you will find it by morning, right? Okay, don't take okay, it. Okay, fine, fine. Okay. And one thing I forget to tell you that uh, again, I'm reminding if you go to this particular things, you will find uh, in my drive, okay, uh, you will find this particular uh, PDF, uh, I mean this Excel sheet. Just one minute, I'm taking your one more minute. You will find here one thing that is called prerequisite. Prerequisite. Okay. So if you are new to servlet JSP, these are in very simple English. Okay. It is accessible to you, right? All right. This is stopped. I stopped the sharing. Just give me one minute. Okay. So you see that I hope my screen is still visible. So you can do one thing. You can find the videos like introduction to servlet JSP. If you open this link, uh, Okay, even I will put this uh, videos free to on YouTube so that anybody can learn whether he joined the course or not doesn't matter. So these videos sir, are... you can yeah, so you can share this uh, this link this sheet link in the group or like in this chat. Yeah, not in chat. I will share in the group actually in the group. It's already there in the WhatsApp group. You will find that on the title of that WhatsApp group. It is there if you check it out. It was only recording link, right? The WhatsApp group? Or no, no, this no. Also? This is the Excel sheet. I, will, I never share okay, the recording fine. link directly. You see that? Okay. Otherwise, if I share the recording link, now, you have to store somewhere, right? It is your nightmare. So I'm sharing this okay. Excel sheet. Everything would be date-wise. Suppose date-wise, I'll write this. Okay? You understand Hindi? Okay. Right. Any other questions, guys? Okay. So, guys, uh, I think time is up, right? Okay. So somebody is chatting. Please. Share the PDF, right? I will share. I will share for the viewing purpose, right? Okay. So bye for now. Good night. Take care. Right. If there's any yeah, queries or question, yeah, please please ping me in the WhatsApp, right? Okay. Yeah. Take care. Bye. 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 Take care.